Hello and welcome. In this video, I wanted to take a look at an interesting Thousand Suns list for the Forces of Chaos. This list did rather well in a recent tournament and was a thousand point list, so as we've covered a 500 point and a 2000 point list, I thought it was time to cover the go between point between those two different lists. And with that being said, let's see how this list did. This list placed third place out of 18 players in a tournament known as All Hope is Lost, and this tournament was held on November 12th, 2022 in the United Kingdom. The list was played by a player known as Peter Armstrong. And with that being said, let's dive right into the list. This list consists of a single battalion detachment composed of the Cult of Time. The Cult of Time is one of the two most popular cults within the Thousand Sun Forces. This cult gives you access to a psychic power that allows you to resurrect a dead model within a squad. And this is rather good in an army such as Thousand Suns, which have rather durable and elite units within their forces. So with that being said, let's start by looking at the HQ choice for this battalion detachment. This list has decided to go rather heavy in the HQ choices, bringing a total of three different choices. The first of those is a very popular character who competes with the Demon Prince, known as Ahriman. Ahriman comes with three Cabal points, and he can cast up to three Psychic Powers a turn. In addition to that, Ahriman has been made the Warlord of this army list. So let's take a look at what Psychic Powers this Ahriman has. Ahriman in this case has three different Psychic Powers in addition to his Cult and Smite Psychic Power. The first of the chosen powers is the Glamour of Zinch, and the Glamour of Zinch says when successfully manifested, you can select a friendly Thousand Suns unit within 18 inches, and enemies get minus one to hit when targeting that unit. And as for the second psychic power, it's Presage. Presage once again targets a friendly Thousand Suns unit within 18 inches, and that unit gets plus one to hit if this power is successfully manifested. And finally, the third and final psychic power is Weaver of Fates. Weaver of Fates is once again a buff psychic power, which allows you to select a friendly Thousand Suns unit within 18 inches when successfully manifested, and the unit gets a 4 plus immortal save. This is an incredibly powerful psychic power that does give the Thousand Suns something rather unique, and lets them run certain units that other Chaos Forces wouldn't be able to really optimally run in most situations in the ways that the Thousand Suns can. All in all, as you can see, this Armon is designed to buff different units, and isn't necessarily an offensive character, so he's definitely going to be very lucrative to your forces. Though with that being said, as Armon is going to be hanging back and buffing your other units, he hasn't been given something like the disc, as his mobility isn't as vital in those situations. However, that being said, the disc is still a rather nice item, so it should be something you consider when bringing something like an Armon or other sorceress units, but there are situations where you have to prioritize your points in different ways. Anyway, with that being said, let's move on to the second HQ choice of the three HQ choices. The second HQ choice is an Exalted Sorcerer. The Exalted Sorcerer is also a very popular inclusion, oftentimes seen play alongside Armon and other HQ choices. And don't forget the Exalted Sorcerer also brings three Cabal points, and in this situation, the Exalted Sorcerer has been made into a very offensive character, being armed with a Prosper and Kopesh and a Disc of Zinch for 25 points, which brings up his movement speed from 6 inches to 12 inches with the fly keyword, allowing him to avoid certain types of terrain. In addition to that, the Sorcerer has been given a relic. This relic is one that we've seen before, known as Athenian Scrolls, and it's an Exalted Sorcerer-only relic that says once per battle you can select a psychic power you're attempting to manifest, and for the rest of the battle, every time the Sorcerer tries to manifest this power, you roll an additional d6 and discard one of the rolled d6s for the psychic test. This doesn't seem like the most impressive thing, especially when considering how many different abilities the Thousand Suns have to increase their different psychic tests. However, in this situation, this relic is actually a lot better than it seems. As for the two different psychic powers that the Exalted Sorcerer knows, in addition to basic powers, is Zinch's Firestorm. And Zinch's Firestorm says you can select a visible enemy unit within 18 inches and you roll 9d6. And for each 6 that you roll, the enemy suffers one mortal wound. However, if the psychic test was passed on an unmodified psychic check of 9+, plus, the enemy actually suffers mortal wounds on a 5+, plus instead of a 6. This means that with the additional consistency of the Athenian Scrolls, you can more consistently get that 9+, plus and essentially double the number of mortal wounds you're going to generate on average when using the psychic power. So whereas normally you're not super worried about something like the Athenian Scrolls, when combined with something like the Xenchus Firestorm, it does make a very interesting combination, and does make the Exalted Sorcerer into a very interesting and offensive psychic character. As for the second psychic power that the Sorcerer knows, the second psychic power is Doombolt, and Doombolt really is just a good offensive psychic power, which is a slightly more consistent smite, in that when successfully manifested, Doombolt just deals three mortal wounds directly and does not have to actually roll to see how many mortal wounds it generates. All in all, this is a rather powerful psychic character, 
and with those psychic powers of mind, in addition to Smite, this Exalted Sorcerer can actually put out quite a lot of mortal wounds every single turn and can be one of the stronger hitting units within different armies in the game. Anyway, with that being said, let's move on to the third and final HQ choice. The third and final HQ choice is another rather popular one, being the Infernal Master. And the Infernal Master generates two Cabal points, and this Infernal Master has been given quite a few different upgrades, the first one being Aether Strider, which is a Warlord trait. Aether Strider is a trait you're not going to see very commonly, but it isn't the worst one in the world, as what it does is it gives plus three inches to the movement of the character that bears it, and the character can fall back and charge within the same turn, as well as he counts as having the fly keyword while moving. This Warlord trait isn't bad, and it definitely helps the mobility, as it acts as a bit of a pseudo-disc. However, you do have to keep in mind that in the Nephilim edition, you're rather starved for command points, and there might be better things you can choose to use those command points on. In addition to the Warlord trait, the Infernal Master has been given a relic. The relic he has been given is a very popular and a very powerful relic, this relic being the Umberlific Crystal. The Umberlific Crystal functions sort of like the Veil of Darkness or the Solar Flare, in that it allows you to remove a friendly unit next to the bearer and redeploy it instantly anywhere on the table that's at least 9 inches away from any enemy models. However, unlike the other relics mentioned, this one only moves the unit and not the bearer of the relic, making it a little harder to support that unit once it's been teleported. However, do keep in mind it's still a very powerful ability and gives you incredible ability to position one of your units very effectively on the tabletop pretty much anywhere you would like. And with some of the amazingly durable units that the Thousand Suns has, or can make using the various abilities, this is definitely a very powerful ability, and can be used very effectively, especially in combination with Aether Strider, as you can teleport a unit, and then rush either the Exalted Sorcerer on the disc, or the Infernal Master to their position. This would also be a situation where you might want to consider the disc on the Armon so that he could better reach and support a unit with his different buff abilities. That being said, we're not done with the Infernal Master, as the Infernal Master knows one Psychic Power and two Infernal Pacts. As for the psychic power that he knows, he knows a psychic power called Twist of Fate, and Twist of Fate allows him to select an enemy unit within 12 inches when this psychic power is successfully manifested and the selected unit cannot take invulnerable saves. This is actually a rather powerful ability as certain units really heavily depend on their invulnerable save to survive, so the ability to shut down their invulnerable save, especially if you have good armor penetration on some of your units, you can really pretty much be dealing mortal wounds when using the psychic power. So combine that with the Aether Strider ability and you'll really see how you can really position and take advantage of the Psychic Power and how different abilities work together in conjunction to kind of give you the ability to do some real effective work with this Infernal Master. And now let's take a look at the Infernal Pacts. The Infernal Pacts that this Infernal Master has been given are Glimpse of Eternity, which when successfully invoked allows you to roll one dice roll that you have rolled within the turn until your next command phase. This dice can be any dice that you roll except for that related to the mission dice. As for the second Infernal Pack, the second Malefic Pack is Malefic Maelstrom. Malefic Maelstrom says, when you successfully invoke this ability, you can select a friendly Thousand Suns unit that is visible to the Infernal Master and within 24 inches. That unit adds plus one strength to range attacks, which can really add up when you consider some of the heavy hitting weapons that don't necessarily have the best strength profile in the Thousand Suns forces. And with Infernal Packs covered, we conclude the three different HQ choices of this battalion detachment, and we can move on to a troop choice. The troop choice of this battalion detachment consists of three different troop choices. The first of those two troop choices are two units of five Rubric Marines. Each of those units has an Icon of Flame, allowing each unit to generate two Cabal points, and you pretty much always take the Icon of Flame as it is free at this point, so it pretty much is just a free Cabal point for every unit of Rubric Marines you bring. As for the other upgrades, each unit has been given a Soul Reaper Cannon, which is generally something you're going to see within Thousand Sun units, as the Soul Reaper Cannon is a rather efficient weapon for its points cost, and something that you're generally just going to bring because it does what it does rather well. Each of the unit champions has a different psychic power as each of the champions is a sorcerer in their own right. The first unit's champion has the psychic power known as Gaze of Hate. Gaze of Hate is another offensive psychic power that when successfully manifested allows you to select a visible enemy within 18 inches and you roll 3d6. For each 4 plus rolled, the enemy suffers one mortal wound. On average, you're going to roughly generate two mortal wounds every time you successfully manifest this ability, so it's pretty comparable to that of a different version of a smite. In any case, it's definitely a fine ability to have, and considering how many different psychic powers you have, you're going to run into some situations where you might take one that's less impressive, just because of the limitations you have on psychic powers. As for the second champion, the second champion has the Empiric Guidance. The Empiric Guidance, when successfully manifested, allows it to select a friendly Thousand Suns unit within 12 inches and add 6 inches to the range of their rapid fire and heavy weapons. As pretty much all of the ranged weapons on the Thousand Suns inventory are rapid fire and heavy, this pretty much simply adds 6 inches to the ranged weapons within a Thousand Suns squad. 
and that's a pretty decent ability, considering that because your units are rather elite, you're going to have fewer of them than certain other armies, and as such, the ability to extend their range and give them the ability to thread more parts of the board is definitely a beneficial one to have to make the most out of some of your limited resources. In any case, the third and final troop choice for this battalion detachment is a unit of 10,000 Sun Cultists. The Cultists don't bring any Cabal points and are restricted to one unit per every unit of 1,000 Suns Rubric Marines and 1,000 Suns Scarabical Terminators. And whereas in the Death Guard, the Poxwalkers edge out the Cultists, the Cultists and the 1,000 Suns edge out the Zangors for the most part, though there are situations where you want one over the other. The problem is, the Cultists are a bit cheaper in points than the Zangors, so they're generally going to be more cost effective, and the points difference does not give the Zangors enough of a punch to be that much better than the Cultists, so generally, they're not going to have enough of a justification to be brought over the cultists. In this case, this unit of cultists has been armed with auto pistols and brutal assault weapons, with the champion being given a shotgun and a brutal assault weapon. In any case, the cultists are just generally a decent enough chaff unit that can be a bit of an objective unit and a good way to fill up points as they're an incredibly cheap unit considering the cost of your different Astartes units. That concludes the troop choice for this battalion detachment, and we can move on to the lead choice of this battalion detachment. The lead choice within this battalion detachment is a single elite choice, that elite choice being the very popular unit of Scarabacal Terminators. The Scarabacal Terminators in this case are a unit of five Terminators, being armed with no additional upgrades except for Legion Command on the Champion. The Legion Command chosen is the Rites of Coalescence, which allows them to restore the wounds of any single model within every single command phase, and when you combine that with the ability to resurrect the model with the Cult of Time Psychic Power, you definitely have a very durable unit. In terms of the Psychic Power on the Champion, as the Champion is a Sorcerer, this Champion has been given the Temporal Surge. The Temporal Surge, when successfully manifested, allows the Champion to select an Infantry, Cavalry, or Beast unit within 6 inches, and that unit can make a 6 inch normal move. This definitely gives some nice additional speed to that unit, and with the combination of the other speed buffs, as well as Umberlefic Crystal, you can definitely see that this list is actually rather mobile, even though it's pretty much all infantry units, as you have that Exalted Sorcerer on a disc, you have the Umberlefic Crystal, and the Aether Thryer trait on the Infernal Master. There's a lot of very mobile units, especially when you consider the Temple Surge on this unit of Terminators. And don't forget that the Terminators do contribute one Cabal Point to your different Cabal Points. That being said, there's one thing I don't really understand, and I don't get why they didn't take a Missile Rack or a Soul Reaper Cannon on this unit of Terminators. I know the unit of Terminators is going to be a bit of a big target, but the unit of Terminators is definitely a lot more durable than those units of Rubric Marines, so generally, for the same cost, you could have moved one of those Soul Reaper Cannons onto the unit of Terminators, and maybe found some point somewhere to include a Missile Rack, as those two weapons are rather good and do offer a lot to Terminators. In addition to that, if you give those weapons to Terminators, you do have a bit of a better target for that Empiric Guidance, though I think this player might have thought, may have thought that the Terminators are going to be a bit more of an Assault unit with a Temporal Surge on their Champion. So maybe they expected to have that unit of Terminators engage in combat more often, though considering some of the units we're about to see with, within this Battalion Detachment, I still think it might have been better to kind of make these Terminators a little stronger and make some of your other units a little weaker. And with the very powerful HQ choices, I don't think you would be putting all of your eggs in one basket simply by making the Terminators a little bit more powerful with two different weapon upgrades. In any case, I guess it's just a matter of preference, and do remember that at the end of the day, it comes down to how you wish to play the army list, and not what someone on the internet tells you to do. Anyway, let's move on to a final unit type within this army. The final unit type is two units of fast attack choices. The first of those fast attack choices is a unit of five chaos spawn, and the second is a single unit of one chaos spawn. As I mentioned before, the Chaos Spawn are a bit of a unique unit within the Thousand Suns in comparison to how they function in other Chaos Armies. In other Chaos Armies, Chaos Spawn are definitely decent, but the problem is the Chaos Spawn don't really have a particularly good save, so they're a bit vulnerable and they're a bit more random than they would be within the Thousand Suns. Because don't forget, they have a special stratagem that allows you to select their mutation within the Thousand Suns, making them a lot more consistent, and the ability to give them a 4 plus invulnerable save, in addition to some of your other psychic powers really does make them that much more of a threat than they would normally be. In addition to that, that is also the reason why I didn't think the Terminators were necessarily going to be a big melee threat, as the Chaos Spawn are primarily a melee option, and they're going to perform the function of a melee brawler a lot better in a lot of situations than the Scarable Cult Terminators, assuming that you're buffing the Chaos Spawn and not one of your other units. That being said, do remember that the more resources you put into the Chaos Spawn, the less resources you have to put into other units. Though at the same time, your other units are rather durable and rather powerful, so being able to take that unit of 
5k out of spawn, which is only 115 points, and making it go that additional extra mile definitely is very appealing. As for the single chaos spawn, I might have cut that one to give some other upgrades to some of my other units, or to simply bring some other things, as a single chaos spawn is not the most impressive. That being said, a single chaos spawn can still do a lot of work, and has its place within a lot of different chaos armies, as a lot of chaos armies will take advantage of the ability to bring a single chaos spawn at a very low points cost for different mission and objective reasons, as it can be a decently annoying enough unit for an incredibly low points cost, which I believe is the lowest points cost option in the army, for a unit that can kind of exist on the board by itself, so it definitely has that role as well. I just think with the cultists and the two units of rubrics, as well as the scarab occult and the powerful HQ choices, that the single chaos spawn maybe would have been better as a different option, but at the same time, there's a lot of justification to bring it as well and bring all the other choices within the army as they are now. The biggest criticism I have, though, is not putting a soul reaper cannon on the scarab occults and putting a soul reaper cannon on each of the rubrics, as simply moving one of those does give you a little bit more durability. Though at the same time, the combat bolters on the Scarab Occults is definitely a stronger weapon than simply just the bolter on the Rubric Marines, so there's also that argument to be made if it were trying to be as point efficient as possible. In any case, I do think this is an interesting 1000 point list, and don't forget that you're bringing a total of 13 Cabal points at 1000 points, which gives you access to a lot of different Kabbalistic rituals, so let me know in the comments down below if you like this kind of list. And as a whole, let me know what you think of the Thousand Suns forces, as you can see that from the 500 point to 1000 points to 2000 points, their lists kind of evolve very similarly, and they don't deviate too much from kind of a handful of core choices, though I have seen some Thousand Suns armies that do take advantage of some rather unique and interesting models, and I'll probably cover those at some point, but at the time being, I think this kind of gives you an idea of the Thousand Suns overall, and let me know if you think I could have done something better to kind of better present the Thousand Suns as an army to a new player, or maybe an intermediate player looking to kind of be a little more competitive. Anyway, once again, thank you for watching, and have a great day. Don't forget, there's an exciting announcement coming up. Hopefully I'm not overhyping it, but I think it's one that's going to be exciting for me, and hopefully one that you can kind of enjoy as well. And once again, have a great day. Bye.